All right, thanks, Matt. So here we are, Stephen Dykeman, the juggernaut, Richard Papierski trying to play the spoiler. And honestly, if you're going to have to play spoiler, you may as well. I mean, he hasn't lost yet uh, today. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, yeah, Dykeman, Dykeman lost the match both days. Are we hyping the wrong man? Right? I mean, it's, it's, he's washed, honestly, it sounds like. Uh, <laughs> So we see uh, Richard Papieski on the play. That's one of the, the benefits you get by being the first seed when you just don't lose at all. And mm -hmm. then uh, it looks like Steven Dykeman leading off on his one main edge US, uh, taking one fable, seeing another. So you you hate to see that if you're on the uh, the Dykeman train. Yeah, sure. What do we have left over here? We have, what, four land impulse, two fables. That's certainly a keepable hand going first for Richard in a, in a matchup that may be somewhat grindy, but then Richard also has the opportunity, the possibility of just you know, wiping out Steven at any given moment. So we'll see how this progresses here. This isn't quite um, the lopsided match of Rakdos versus Lotus that we saw a few hours ago. Uh, this is certainly much more interactive from, from Richard's side and, and somewhat disruptible, uh, I would suppose. Yeah, it's similar in the sense of if creativity is doing its thing, you kind of dodge a lot of the the fatal pushes and the, the stomps and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you set up big score into creativity, but uh, those cards can actually be relevant in a way that they, you know, <laughs> are pretty embarrassing most of the time against Lotus. But we do see that crucial second thought sees hoping, I assume, to tag the second fable that we saw in Richard's hand a turn ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Richard contemplating something here. I mean, if it's if it's impulse first, that seems questionable. Yeah, he's just gonna let it go. Yeah, I mean you you kind of know that the fable is getting taken no matter what, so you may mm -hmm. as well wait on the impulse so that you Stephen has this information. Right. Yeah, there's no reason. Right. For third Stephen would third fable time. Let's go. Just how we draw it up. Yeah, I guess I mean there's the idea of hiding from Stephen what you get, but if it's a third fable, it's going right down on the board anyway. You can just put that one face up. We know that one's coming. Okay. Rakdos midrange. Is it creativity? It's been a long weekend for both players. I even especially longer one for Steven Dykeman. Richard wasn't in the modern event for too long yesterday. Oh, he, but... he's showing some real uh some real stamina. Mm -hmm. But did give it a shot. But yeah, Steven has been playing like Matt it was alluding to. It's been it's been a long weekend for him, but uh one that is gonna be memorable, hopefully for fond memories for for a long time but we'll it, see if you can finish it out it's tiring in the moment you would much rather have a long weekends and short weekends when it comes to magic mm -hmm. <laughs> okay another right. thought sees here so we'll see maybe what was picked up off the ouch okay well yeah. that, there goes dick through time that's tough because that's a great way to recover your hand after yeah. being beat up by discard spells and it's now gone richard cannot be pleased to see that no Damn, that's like, like a <laughs> yeah crucially <laughs> beautiful tapping for black thanks to urborg so that, mm -hmm. that's a little combination right there yeah right into the face of your fire impulse like yeah i know you have it i don't care go ahead yeah we'll, we'll trade off cards that's fine i want the blood token more anyway okay richard with the spire bluff canal nothing too exciting going on here nope no real non-land permanence on the board here i guess steven has a blood token but that's not going to amount to too much do we have some kind of big payoff here i mean discard cleared the way opened yeah. the door and what do we have you need that follow-up right because mm -hmm. steven had a great start triple discard spell but you give richard enough time he'll find a big score he'll find something else and then there's always this threat of well my opponent's seen three new cards what if it's token maker into creativity and suddenly i just lose mm -hmm. out of nowhere so yeah. you, you want to shorten that window as much as you can this would be a great turn for Graveyard Trespasser, Shielded, maybe a Fable of, of mm -hmm. Steven's own. Well, Steven's got at least a Liliana, which also is not too bad. Oh, that one's fantastic, yeah. Oh, but it's going to be fable. fable. Okay. Yeah, that works too. So, however, Steven manages to get to turn three. Every time he seems to have options on what to do, and I guess that's kind of the way the deck's designed. The the two drops are, are somewhat unimpressive. The three drops are all great. Looks like just uh, Pathway and Odawara, I believe, in mm -hmm. Richard's hand. Mm -hmm. But I think it was the draw of Fable. It was. <laughs> okay. Well, well hey, you can't throw the top of the deck. Yeah, turn later than you would have liked it, but still, he found it. And that's two cards in hand that Richard probably would not mind exchanging for whatever's on top of the deck. 
So that's that's not ideal. But if if Steven does have the Liliana, can eat eat that Goblin token, attack with his own. Mm -hmm. His Fable is is progressing faster, so could work his way towards reflection. So not not ideal for Steven, but you know it could be worse. We get to rummage first too. Could you know fatal push or stomp the token? Do you see fit to do that instead? Yeah, we'll see. Whatever decision Steven makes here will probably be the right one. He's having the weekend of his life, magic is, as far as magic goes. Or maybe that's not true, but certainly a a stellar one that he will probably remember for a long time. I mean, he's been in invitational top eights, right. and I'm sure yeah. you know, has has some GP success as well. Like he's mm -hmm. he's played a lot of magic in a lot of places, uh, but this is a a really nice uh, exclamation point to have on that resume. Yeah. So was this this was a fable? Keep my hand. I oh, believe. Of strength. Yeah. <laughs> so dispatch the token attack for treasure. Is this going to be literally on a plus? No. Uh, well, that that treasure, yeah, going away as soon as it came in. So it really is. on a plus. Down goes Odawara. Mm -hmm. well, Odawara is a way to fight back against Liliana when your opponent's empty-handed. Both players with one card in hand, and here is Richard's fable time, his rummaging. He needs this. He needs something quality here. Do you want to rummage your one card? Well, he's thinking about it, so it must be something playable. Prophecy down. Okay. I think if he had another card that he could rummage away with the prophecy, it might be worth keeping just to hit uh -huh. the token. But as it is, you would be empty handed. So here it's, it's yeah. just a removal spell, not what the doctor ordered at this point. Uh -huh. Muta Vault, I guess, is uh you know better than better than some things that could have been some lands that could have been drawn even. Uh with the fable transforming, would creativity off the top be live? It would, yeah. So yeah. especially with that Mutavolt as the second target there. Mm -hmm. So that's the threat looming over the game. That said, you're targeting two creatures that both get stomped. One of them can get Fatal Push. So right. Steven does have some counterplay against that too. And then here's the thing about this creativity deck. You're aiming to hit, to play it for X equals two. You get the Xena Ghost, you get the Wallspine one. If you have to just play it for one, well, now you've got a, a, a roulette spin on your hands because mm -hmm. you could hit the Wallspine one and actually be in a pretty decent spot. Or you could hit the Xena Ghost and... Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and and be dead to rise. All right. So Steven does not plus Liliana as he has a card and Richard does not. And and will await uh, Richard's draw, which needs to be good. If he's thinking about it, at, yeah. If he's thinking <laughs> about it at all, it's not creativity. So yes. Steven treasure soldiers untaps, gets ready. Cashes in the treasure, draw a card with Bank Blaster. Okay, so Bank Blaster doing its run at six impression of providing a card to discard to Liliana. Steven tries to figure out how to close out this game. He's done all of the hard work of just wiping out Richard's resources. Just needs to finish him off here. Yeah, Liliana now might see fate to just minus and take uh -huh. care of the reflection. Sure. Get that uh, creativity for two line out of the way. Yeah, chat asking how Dykeman was able to win Modern and still have time to play in the Pioneer Tournament. And if you get to the finals, you do actually get a buy that the covers that stretch of time in the mm -hmm. 5K. So this is how many a run has been made in the past. Is you win, you win one tournament, you get 10 minutes to catch your breath, and you immediately hop into the other one, and you mm -hmm. start at one and zero. So you have that uh, that momentum, if you will. Yeah, two right. buys even. Yeah, yeah. Th let's use and uh, the big score was the draw for Richard. So that's unfortunate as that's something that is uncastable in the face of Liliana and now it goes down. But yeah, so the, the modern Swiss was yesterday and quarterfinals. So there was 
just two rounds of modern this morning that Steven had to play. Obviously, he won both of them uh, before starting his run in the Pioneer event. Interesting that Richard sacrificed uh, Reflection instead of Mutavolt there. But I don't think it's going to matter too much. Mm, yeah, I suppose that's true. Uh, Mutavolt, safer, but certainly less useful. All right, so here's an attack with two Fable tokens. Steven will pick up a couple treasures. Richard takes a little bit of damage. Nothing too consequential here. And uh, your Richard just stuck. I mean, there are a number of cards in this deck that just don't function off the top. Big Score being one of them. His combo cards being others. I mean, like you said, creativity for one here. If Steven didn't have removal, if he gets the worm, okay, we can talk. Yeah, this creativity deck doesn't have any ways to go up on cards. Even something like Fable is mostly mm -hmm. card neutral in that sense. So if you're playing off the top, you're kind of playing off the top, unless you have the, the one dig through time, I suppose. Ooh, attack Liliana here with Mutafault. All right, so Steven has his own Mutafault to block with, but doesn't need it because there's Bone Crusher Giant to go into the Adventure Land and take down the Mutafault itself. And now Richard has... Okay. Four. So the, the, yeah, Fable. Okay. The draw is Fable. All right, all right. So able to stay empty-handed, obviously not wanting to pass the turn with one card in hand. And Steven will untap with plus one card from the Bankbuster, probably. Leon able to exhaust itself to, to wipe out the token. And Richard down to 12. No, well, Steven says no Bankbuster draw. I'd rather keep the treasures. So yeah, Liliana minuses. We can play Bone Crusher, Crew Bank Buster. So that's four, six, eight. All right. So that was Crew and Copy. Oh no, we we can copy copy and Bone Crusher. Is, Excuse me. This so is this, is, this is this is twelve, is a, right? Yeah, this is not. Yeah, Stephen saw this coming because he had a thought. He had thought through and planned out. And here is the the twelve. <laughs> yeah, yeah Treasure's not attacking, but. Uh, does exist and yeah bone crusher bank buster media vault and fable token that's 12 and steven dykeman is up a game because of course he is what else could happen one more one game away that's right one more one a game. clean sweep Jeez. well <laughs> yeah richard papierski is going to have to look over his sideboard and we'll do the same and see what options he may have to to turn this around uh is there anything is there an anti dykeman card in your sideboard yeah, it might have to be that at this point, not just an anti Rakdos card. You really need something <laughs> targeted at uh, Stephen Dykeman himself. We'll bring up his deck list, see what he is uh, working with here in our finals. So, this right. is very similar to the list uh, that won the Pro Tour in the hands of uh, Reju. And so, nothing here really aimed at Rakdos. You can imagine you know, the Shark Typhoons may be decent in this matchup, um, or. I don't, I don't think this is a matchup where you want to transform into the whole break of horrors, especially knowing as you do against the three Lilianas, you know, just creatively for one, flopping a whole break of horror into play, unlikely to actually go the distance. So mm -hmm. uh, probably going to stick on, on the combo plan here. Yeah, all right. And then Dykeman's list. Rakdos midrange, kind of the original deck of the format alongside Green Devotion, still staying strong while others have fallen aside. Uh, maybe has undergone some changes along the way. So here, I think, yeah, third Liliana, we saw it, that just shred Richard's uh, hand and, and chances that game. Uh, third Liliana there, three dresses, of course. Uh, maybe the go blank just as a mind rot, right? The the exile course mm -hmm. doesn't do much for you, but just get cards out of their hand. And then the Colican's commands where, yeah, it's a pretty versatile card, but specifically, uh, if... It, uh, if Richard's going off with creativity, it's either on artifact tokens, like the treasure tokens, or it's mm -hmm. on creatures, and it's yeah. small creatures. So either way, you can you can bust that up. Yeah. All right. I mean, this is at this point. I mean, I know you try when you're playing an event. If you're trying to maintain a a level mindset, you're trying to get ahead of yourself. But we're at the end, and Stephen Eichmann is well aware that he only needs to one win one game to take down both events of the entire weekend. I mean, that's kind of, how does that affect you? Do you, 
can you possibly, I know myself personally, there's no way I'm not thinking ahead to the glory that is my future if I win this game. I can't right. be. I, <laughs> just, I cannot stay level-headed in this moment. That's not me. Uh, I don't know if uh, the, the dollar signs are already flashing in front of Steven's eyes. <laughs> I mean, maybe from this morning still, but mm -hmm. uh, it's like, uh, abstractly, you know, if you lose this finals, you know you've had a fantastic weekend. I mean, yeah. you if someone told you coming in, first and second, I mean, yes, snap it off, right? At the same time, once you're still there, you're playing this finals, you want that first place so badly. You know what that means. And it's it's more than the sum of its parts, right? If you win this tournament, great. You win another tournament three weeks from now, great. You win both of them back to back, that means something, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's a story. Yeah, no, it certainly is. And uh, yeah, you all in chat watching, I mean, let us know. Are you, are you hoping for the Dykeman sweep on the weekend? Or are you hoping Richard Papierski interrupts and, and takes this down for himself? I mean, obviously he's going to be giving it his all. I came up short that game, but this is a capable deck, a capable player who has not lost in Pioneer this weekend. So, yeah, and he's the number one seed for a reason. We'll see. We'll see. We'll return ourselves to the table and, and see what the result is. Players shuffling up uh, for potentially the last game of the weekend. You can see the trophy there on the table. 2023 Showdown winner, Energy Championship Series on the line. I think Steven should get the other one from this morning out of his bag and just plonk it on the table too, just to make, <laughs> make a statement here. Well, and then, but Richard should say double or nothing. Like if he wins, he gets both trophies. I mean, right? You want to, right? you want Steven, if, you, if you're confident, put it all on the line. All right. We're having a good time here uh, in chat asking about Declus. Declus should be available now if you go to MTG Melee. The entire pool of 287 Declus from Modern and 207 Pioneer. Decks should all be available right now. Players are cutting, players are presenting, and we are ready to go. Well, Richard's not quite ready yet. <laughs> Still shuffling it off. Contemplating what the ideal draw might be. Hoping Steven Dykeman mulls to two or a Meteor lands exactly on Steven's chair and Richard advances by default. You never know what could happen. I recall you saying uh, the last time I was doing coverage with you that if you were in the hunt for the championship race, you'd be hoping for your competitors to get hit by a truck or to yeah, you know, sure. grizzly fates to befall all of them. So yeah. I, just, I know that's very much in your wheelhouse. I'll I'll take the win however it is handed to me. Yeah. Win's a win. And, yeah, exactly. All right, Richard. Give me open hand. Looks like Fire Impulse, a couple big scores. Are there enough lands? Maybe not. The answer is no. Steven Dykeman. Seven card hand looks like a keep. You know what? Even if it's a even if it's no land, keep anyway. You'll probably draw three lands off the top and be fine. Not like this, Richard has to be thinking, you know? <laughs> it's again, very successful weekend uh for him as well. Really can't complain about second place. But if you're losing in the finals, you you kind of can complain about yeah, second place I mean, just a little always, bit. It's always you can always find unless you actually win, you can always find a way to be a little disappointed because you could have done that much better. And even if you do win, you can still be like, oh, back in round four, I played the wrong land on turn three. Darn it, I suck. You know, there's always if we're trying to get better, we always find flaws. But certainly, both these players have done very well this weekend. But only one is going to walk away with the trophy that you see on the table right now. Richard Papierski cuts his own deck, passes over Steven. Steven cuts it back. It's like, oh, I'm going to try to find the exact same cut you did, hand it back to you untouched. We'll see what happens. Is this trophy officially part of the battlefield at this point? Like, what happens if we have to attack? <laughs> it blocks. <laughs> okay. Only is flyers this are battle? allowed. Only flyers are allowed. Is that new card type that we've, we've heard so oh, much yeah. about? <laughs> A little preview action here on the stream. It should be. Yeah, we don't. We don't get spoiler cards in Nerd Rage Gaming. Yeah, this sh we we should we should get to spoil what a, whatever a battle is. That's appropriate. We're trying hard here, you know, carrying the history of televised magic coverage and bringing it along with us into 2023. Okay, Richard, what do we got? I don't see a lot of land there. <laughs> see some removal spells. The trophy being removed. Okay. <laughs> Steven pauses. Is that Spire Bluff Canal tapped? Uh, okay. It's like, I'm going to see those cards in a second anyway. <laughs> Just lay them on the table. 
All right, how many land do we have? We do have a Muta Vault. We have a Fire Prophecy, an Impulse, a Shark Typhoon, and a Fiery Impulse. I said Impulse twice because there's two cards that got confused. <laughs> anyway, this is the card that's are, cards are available. Richard has a functional hand. It's not maybe great, but playable. Yeah, you see a hand like that has a little bit of everything. You take the hand that can fill whatever hold is left in a turn or two mm -hmm. from now, right? Sure. Yeah, so this may lead to if Steven passes on turn two, we might just see our Richard with a Shark Typhoon for zero just to yeah. hope to look for future land drops. I mean, depending on how Steven's hand looks, no guarantee either of those removal spells is going to be relevant in, in mm -hmm. the short term, right? So uh, you might get, you know, mug into six already. You thought he's one card. There might be two semi-dead cards still yeah. rotting in Richard's hand. Yeah, this may be a scenario where, oh, I mean, could Dykeman, if with Blood Tithe Harvester, consider not playing it? So that Richard can't cycle the fire. The uh, well, okay, he's going to fire it out there. Okay, yeah, I'm sure Richard is probably okay with this. Yeah, fire yeah. Prophecy, ditch the impulse, perhaps. Fiery impulse. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> right. The fiery prophecy. We'll okay. okay, that's not what he's going to do. He's just going to use the fiery impulse to take down the harvester and then look for the top card. Do we have? There's a land. Do we have land fable? Do we have something useful here? Yeah, I might have been inclined to use the Fire Prophecy instead just to maximize my chance uh, hitting right. that Fable on three. Yeah. Is it okay. Liliana time? Oh, that Fable. Would be, that'd be harsh. Breaking, breaking some mirrors out here. What's going on? It's a Trespasser. Okay. Okay, okay. Solid enough. And also something that... Richard isn't really going to want a fire prophecy. He already only has three cards left, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he has to use two of them to burn through that that uh, yeah that trespasser. And it becomes daytime. Steven's like, it's going to be night soon. Your tournament prospects are over, buddy. Richard's like, no, no. I'm still in this. Shark Typhoon for one. So it gets a little bit of value alongside his fresh card here. I so... Mean, it Imagine if, if Richard just draws creativity, just mm -hmm. buys it off, and you hit the worm. If you hit the scene and goes, mm, but you hit the worm, then suddenly you might just steal this game that already yeah. seemed uh, seemed pretty lost otherwise. I mean, at that point, it would almost be hard to imagine how Steven could win. Right. You would you would need one of those like extinction events or something in the sideboard, which is such a corner case that you don't bring them in because how often is it gonna gonna matter? But it, it could happen. It could mm -hmm. happen. All right. So what does Richard actually need? Okay, so creativity for one, sure, that would be good. Uh, it's going to be a pass. Uh, looks like an impulse alongside the prophecy and a land in hand, maybe. And it should be night. Yep. All right. Trespasser gets to become gluttonous. If Steven doesn't have additional removal, I mean, Richard is still alive to, to get back into this. This is, this is not over, even though Steven is up a game and, you know, looking solid. And Richard... Richard may be feeling a little bit, feeling a little down after being down a game and down a card to start this game. Like, for example, misreading his own land drop on turn one and putting this fire bluff in tapped for no reason. So we'll see if he can um, draw it together and, and even this up. Yeah, glad I'm going to eat two cards from Richard's bin, even though there's a harvest of that. I think just minimizing uh, the graveyard for dig through time, if that were to come up. And still has the option here of uh, trade my shark and my prophecy and another card for your trespasser, but uh, Richard understandably is not thrilled at that prospect. No, that does not seem very appealing. So what does Steven know in Richard's hand? Just the fire prophecy, right? I think the other two are unknown at this point. Well, okay, I guess Steven's not satisfied that. He's going to go ahead and take a look at them. No. Okay, blood token. Cashing in. Blood crypt. Very flavorful. Do we have a follow up? Careful play there by Steven, even at the end of a long weekend, was thinking about blooding with the. Uh, with the Blackland deciding, you know what, I have this colorless meat of all in my hand, I'm going to play it anyway. I'll play it first and use the blood with that 
preserving as much colored mana as possible. Yeah, so never blocking. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't want this to happen, right? You draw Blood Tithe Harvester and then can't hold open a, a Fatal Push right. or something like that. Yeah. So now, do we probably see that instead? Maybe. Might be the best use we're going to find for it. Perhaps. I think we're going to Impulse first and see if we can find anything useful here. Uh, it's a Fable. Okay. That's something. Mm-hmm. If Richard doesn't like any of these cards, he can cycle them away on the Fire Prophecy. But you're right, Fable is Fable is maybe not the winner, but it is a valuable card and does set him up to go deeper in the deck and have more stuff on the board for the eventual creativity if it does come. Fire Prophecy, talking. Don't get to see just yet. This shark token, just chilling. You know, no yeah. attacks, no blocks. <laughs> just not, not hungry just yet. This was a very successful weekend for Nerd Rage Gaming. This room yesterday and most of today, what you can see behind Richard, all the empty chairs, it was full once upon a time. Now there are only two players remaining. I, One I, of them will be declared a winner. I don't, I don't know about you. It's, it's such a satisfying feeling watching the event staff dismantle the entire... Uh -huh room behind you as you're playing in like the, the the top eight rounds of the tournament oh well i've i've also been at enough neuro rage events helping dismantle things and i'll tell you it's nice it's nice when you <laughs> have a job to do like doing commentary or playing and not having being roped into taking everything else apart because that's a lot of work it sure is yeah. that should be the punishment yep. for losing in the finals not only do you right? lose you have to help disassemble everything <laughs> of course very um, thankful to all of our staff working tirelessly behind the scenes to uh to make events like this possible Thankful to the over 1,200 of you watching this right now, uh, to the uh, over 200 people in each of our events this weekend, uh, mm -hmm. our modern event capped. We raised the cap and then we hit the cap anyway, uh, and then had a very nice turnout today as well. So very successful event by all, all accounts. All right. Graveyard Trespasser. As Steven inches closer to finishing this off, I mean, the pace is slowed. Uh, Richard, with that fable, does have some presence on the board. Uh, can he manage to send this to a third game? Yeah, and now with all of that material for Richard, serious threat of uh, top deck creativity, just mm -hmm. seeing the game out from underneath uh, underneath Dykeman. Yeah, Fable for Steven. That's great and everything. It's really about the the disruptive cards left over, though, that potentially in his hand. Yeah, he, he's holding those uh, close to the vest. Can't get, can't get a great look at those, but... And then maybe a window here for Richard to get something together. Yeah, we can only hope. We're going to look at a few new cards here with Chapter 2 on Fable the Mirror Breaker. I mean, discard 2, draw 2. So Wallspine Worm is there, and crucially, that trigger will go on the stack. You will draw your cards from the other part of the Fable trigger first, and then Wallspine Worm will get shuffled in. Mm -hmm. Steven looks like he's reaching across, confirming that. That's how the sequence does work. And so here goes... The worm back into Richard's deck, where he would rather prefer it be. That means it was in his hand. So that was a vulnerability for him this last turn. If Steven had drawn a Thoughtseize... Oh, no, I'm sorry. It, it goes back immediately, right? So never mind. That's not true. You couldn't grab Trespasser on the attacks. What's my Rome does in fact have a trigger, and the way you know that is because uh, combo decks in their time have used the fact that you discarding that to hand size will create mm -hmm. a trigger to then combo off in the end step. Here we go, though. Creativity for yes, X equal indeed. two. And Steven will have to... And well, here's a storm. So now yeah. we, we know where that What's my Rome is, Joe. Or do well, we? Do, no, do we? Uh, no I don't think we do. No, we, we don't. Okay. Yeah. So this is going to be... 50-50 uh, shot. Yeah. Richard's still with 12 life.
<laughs> Steven, you're looking forward. Okay, what's it going to be? We all wait with bated breath. The game might turn on this on this flip of a card. Oh, it, the tournament might turn on this. This might be it. If this oh, yeah. really goes, we could be done. Both hiding deeper in the deck. It's a lot of cards. <sighs> there it is. Oh, oh, it's the Xenagos. <sighs> <sighs> Big sigh from Richard Papierski. It's not <laughs> what he was looking for. See Steven visibly exhaling there. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to, to lock up your back to back, eh? Mm -hmm. Ghost God of Relevels, you can see there, indestructible, 6-5, does all kinds of cool stuff. <laughs> However, does not actually get to participate unless you have seven red or green devotion, which Richard does not have. Can still affect combat. Its trigger will still affect attackers or blockers, of which Richard does not currently have any. I'm sorry, just attackers. As the board was sucked up into that creativity that has found Xenagos. And, well, Devotion of Three, not quite Seven. Not quite a lethal attack, maybe. Well, hypothetically, if we survive right. a turn and we have another creativity, maybe sure. we get to get, get to get to go again and actually get the worm for sure this time. But, yeah. Uh, Surviving maybe a tall order here is a pretty formidable board for Dykeman. The glutton has two harvesters in his own graveyard to eat, so that's four, six. The token is eight. There's Hype a is vault. eleven. It's, there's a meter vault in play. That would be ten. Yeah, we can get. We can almost get there. Yeah. All right, takes fire prophecy. All right, so Richard's rolling on top of the deck, which we basically knew already. There's unlikely Steven can find any sort of defense that would function if Richard did find creativity on the reflection to get um, World Spine Worm. 12 power blockers is a lot to ask for at this point. Steven, double checking the math. If there's a kill this turn, you don't want to miss it. That's very true. <laughs> So, four, six, eight, ten. Richard is down to two. All right, Stephen finds his treasure, finds his attack. Maybe. Uh, are we waiting on the exiling, or are we still waiting on that? Yeah. yeah. Or it looks like okay, that may have been missed. May yeah, maybe so. Either way, that's not the margin this game is being decided on here. Right. No. Yeah, okay. So Tabisky, creativity right now to stay in this tournament. Boy, this be something we will have talented. a two-time champion. Heads this is hand. a pretty epic slow roll if this is, if this is creativity. <laughs> Richard, <laughs> what do you got? Don't do this to us. Do you have some way of impacting the board enough to stay alive that's not creativity? That we can't think of if you have? We're I can't even in that too. It. He looks at it. He puts it down. He picks it up. The head is in both hands. What can, he have here? what can he have here that require thought that's not creativity? Or, well, I, that wouldn't even require thought either. What, what could this be? <laughs> Passes the turn. Passes the turn. <laughs> okay. All right. We just have to turn these cards sideways. And we have a truly unfathomable conclusion to this weekend. He's going to put the card back in the sleeve, you know. Good practice, good practice. Yeah, yeah. well, you don't, want to, you don't want to find yourself somehow finding a penalty at this point. <laughs> All right, Steven. Already drawn your card? Contemplating what Richard's doing over there? Okay, two mana. Reflection down.
Todd Richard, is up. what do you have? Cod is down. We haven't caught sight of it yet on coverage. At least I haven't seen it. I don't think any of us have. He's saving every moment of this, but yeah, I think sure we're running is. out of moments here. You don't get more prize money for additional seconds spent on camera. Might be like an hourly fee for camera time, something like that, you know? Milk that a little. Our rate is not is not hourly, so not you know right. we, we're yeah. happy to get does, out of here as soon as we can. Does he have actually something that could keep him alive here? A removal spell in graveyard glutton is not possible because of the discard tax. It's shark typhoon into removal, I guess. Okay, sure. Yeah, shark uh, typhoon for one. All right. Right. That would just remember this trigger. Yeah. Okay, right. Down to two. Three attackers coming in. Well, there is a mutant vault there. Okay. It is there a it is. Food, but the third attacker is too much. So Richard did have maybe one card that would justify his pace of play there, but it comes up short, and Steven Dykeman will bag a second trophy on the weekend. And look, we, we said it was 50-50 for that creativity to hit. <laughs> what what someone was in us? Come on now. We knew what was going to happen. The plot <laughs> armor was thick. The height of a rhino... <laughs> wow. Steven Dykeman is your two time champion. He won the 10K. He won the 5K. He won the invite to Dreamhack Dallas. He won another invite to Dreamhack Dallas, which he can't use, but he, he's got it anyway. It's fine. And he has that slot along with Roger Suleiman at the NRG Championship at the end of the year. Not a bad day at the office or weekend at the office, if you no, like. No, certainly not. In fact, as good as it possibly have been, we, stick around. Don't run away yet. We're going to bring Steven Dykeman in here and talk to him. I guess he had an interview this morning. I So I guess. No players ever had two winners interviews in the same day at Nerve Rage Gaming, obviously. So Stephen Dyke will be the first to do that. We'll get him in here. If you have questions in the chat that you want us to ask, throw them out right now. We'll see if we can get him read before he gets in here. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, I mean, pretty stunning. What, uh, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I, I um, hope he has a good uh, winner photo pose again, lined up here, <laughs> like kind of dual, dual fisting the, the trophies mm -hmm. or something. Uh, got, got to figure that out on the fly. Yeah, absolutely. There's not there's not much uh, you can look to to for inspiration as far as that goes. Uh, and Richard Papierski did come up a little bit short there. Congratulations to him making it to the finals of the Pioneer 5K, trying to figure out a way for that Shark Typhoon plus the Mutavault to keep himself alive and came up just a bit short uh, when Steven did have the Graveyard Glutton trigger to put the curtains on the event. Yeah, it's so, that, that matchup, I think, commonly held to be pretty close, you know, uh, mm -hmm. One reason the, the deck was chosen uh, by the CFE team for the Pro Tour. But uh, we, we had some some tight spots in that game. The top deck creativity uh, giving us a little bit of a sweat there. But mm -hmm. uh, Steven showed why, you know, in the right hands, the right does can just carve up anything in its sight. And uh, sure enough, <laughs> that's what happened. Yeah, Rhinos and Rakdos for Steven Dykeman this weekend, taking down two trophies with two powerful mid-range decks. And we've got him in the booth. Let's go ahead and bring him onto the screen. Steven Dykeman, what do you have to say for yourself after all this? Uh, I was quite Welcome back. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's, it was quite a weekend, obviously. Um, <laughs> we, you know, I, I had a lot of, obviously, people saw a lot of really great draws and really critical spots, which you need to win two tournaments. Um, but but it, it was, I mean, it was a lot of fun. Um, tons of really close matches and close matchups. And uh, this top eight was a lot less stressful than the last one. This one, sure. you know, I mean... <laughs> At, at this point, I was kind of just playing to, you know, I would like to win, but it, the the prize for the first one was so much bigger, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, it's, yeah. But but it was still it was still sweet. Um, I've been playing uh, the Shota Rakdos build. Shota's who played this this build at the PT. I'm like different for like two cards. Main deck's exactly the same sideboard. I'm playing one go blank, and uh, the fourth duress um, over the Sky Sov, and uh, I forget what the oh, it's another Ritual of Soot. Uh, just because like the aggro decks have, have kind of gone down, but uh, yeah, the, the, this Rakdos deck's been really impressive for me. The Muta Vaults uh, are are really really good. They come through a lot, and we saw that actually in top eight, especially in that game three uh, in the semis uh, where it just was was pounding away. I think I got like eight damage or something out of it. it just a, a very critical critical component to winning that game. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was a blast, man. I mean, it's it's been a, a heck of a weekend. So, 
All right. So you won both events. Which event you, uh... did you come into feeling more confident in? Yeah. So, uh, like I said at the end of the modern one, I haven't played modern in, in like five, six months. It's been a long time. Um, I'll, I'll play modern when, when I have to, but it's definitely not my favorite format. Um, but you know, I just, I went to rhinos because it's just a really powerful deck. Um, uh, my other choice would have been shadow. Um, but when you haven't played a format for a long time, really, really hard to, to make all the correct decisions with a deck like that. So I decided to go with rhinos just because of the raw power of that deck. Um, I was definitely more confident coming into Pioneer. I was really, really excited for Pioneer because I've I've been playing the Rakdos build at at some local RCQs and and stuff like that recently. I won an RCQ. I won a a, a store champs with it. So I, I think I was like nineteen and three or something coming in into the tournament. So I was I was pretty happy with my results with it. I've been mostly focused on standard for San Diego, but and you know when whenever there's been opportunities, I've been playing the Rakdos stack in Pioneer. So. I was I was pretty confident in the deck. You've uh, you, you played more Magic this weekend than basically anybody. Do you did you find yourself starting to flag mentally a little bit towards oh, the end, or do oh, you yeah, have that I, kind of that yeah. stamina in you? So I um in round four, my loss today to Connor. I actually I threw game two pretty badly. I made a couple mistakes. I I missequenced. I should have played a Bankbuster on turn three instead of a second Harvester for one more point of damage. And then there was another spot where I made a mistake too. But he ended the game at one, so uh, losing that point of damage lost me lost me that match. Um, and then part of the reason I I made that risky draw in round eight was because I, I was a little tired and just kind of wanted a break. And I was like, eh, if I don't make it, I don't make it, whatever. I've had a great weekend. I'll, I'll take take whatever happens. Uh, but I was like pretty confident in my breakers. So I was, I was hopeful it would work out. And then me and my opponent both just got super bailed out by the, the players at table six, just, just drew. So they, they both basically killed themselves and let us both like lock into top eight. So that was really, really fortunate for myself uh, and, and my opponent in that last round. But um yeah I, I i was definitely feeling it man it, it it's a lot it's a lot sure it definitely is now this is uh so i mean both you know both trophies this weekend is there anyone you want to acknowledge like someone you test with somebody you want to shout out that, that you, know, you said you played show this deck for the most part but you've always put a lot of work in does anyone kind of contribute to to the success this weekend that you want to mention well, yeah, man. I mean, you know, the the um, I know you can't really see the team swish right now. I have it covered under my coat, but you know, my my team's great. Um, <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of testing with with Dewey, um, Dewey Vu, um, Larry Fields, and I test a, a fair amount together. A uh, buddy of mine, Max Smith. Uh, I didn't test specifically for this this event with him, but Raja Suleiman and I play together a lot, and you know, I think I think we both um, up each other's game, um, but. Yeah, you know, I I um I've got a really great great group of uh, guys and and friends and and just a great a great group, great support system that that helped me be successful in the game. So, uh, yeah, it was it was awesome, man. I I don't you know I I um I don't know if you guys know this or, or listeners know this, but at the end of last season, I had to miss like three or four events. I was having some health issues, uh, so I just I I couldn't make it out to the events, and that was a, a real bummer because uh, I was I was kind of in the running for the champs last season, so was awesome to my first energy back do this i mean it was just mm -hmm. unbelie unbelievable honestly all right well you deserve all the praise it looks like it feels like you earned it looked good impressive all weekend long enjoy your victories and uh we're gonna see you in san diego in a couple weeks yeah yeah you will all right all right well good luck there as well steven dykeman double champion this weekend at nerd rage gaming congratulations thanks a lot you guys all right and well, uh, viewers at home, thanks for being with us. This was uh, Dominic. I mean, this was quite a weekend for Stephen Dykeman, quite a weekend for Nurage, good attendance, good viewership. Yeah. What's something that you take away from, from this? Magic's great. You know, yes. <laughs> this, was so, this was so much fun. Uh, yeah. And, you know, you have, if you're covering, uh, I did two shifts in the booth this weekend, you expect some of the matches, you know, they're not that competitive, not that not that interesting, you kind of have to find some stuff to talk about. We had we had some of those, admittedly. We also had some just amazing matches mm -hmm. of Magic that are going to stick with me for a long time. Uh, and, you know, Stephen Dykeman put on a clinic there. I mean, it, hard to say, just do what he did, because how often do you even get a chance to do that? But right, uh, showing sure. the kind of, the, the poise and thoughtfulness that you you would expect from a player of his caliber. So yeah, fantastic weekend. Couldn't have drawn it up any better. Uh, certainly for him, but also for us here 
in the booth as well. I guess as a uh, parting thoughts then, so you know, thank you to all of you who have uh, watched throughout the weekend, stuck with us for so long. Uh, again, over a thousand uh, of you at peak moments, uh, fantastic turnout. Uh, everyone who played in our events this weekend, uh, as we said, we capped out the modern event. We we capped it. We raised the cap. We capped that as well. Um, a pioneer event, over two hundred players. So phenomenal. I know uh, some of our events la last year were a little harder to get to. Uh, uh, people struggle to make it out to them sometimes. People did not struggle this time around. So love to see that. No, they um, showed up in force definitely. Definitely. So yeah, we hope to see you uh, either watching at home or out there uh, yourself, uh, Minneapolis in may Mundelein again in june beautiful Mundelein, illinois um hopefully if you're in the the buffalo grove illinois er uh, area you can check out uh nrg's uh physical uh store there uh you can you can play there and we're on our sister stream uh twitch.tv slash nrg store you can watch uh pioneer there tuesday nights uh modern wednesday nights as well uh and you can find us and everyone else back in here uh at every stop this year this is uh this is great i can't, can't wait for the next one yeah, no, and we're happy to have you do an excellent job, and everyone that was watching. All right, so for not only for Dominic Harvey, Harvey but our other commentators, Mason Clark, uh, Doomwake, Devin O'Donnell, and Will Kruger. Uh, for Matt Bamonte, our show host. For Corianne Thoreau, our spotter. And for Libby, who was the event coordinator this weekend, I'm Joe Lissette. We all represent Nerd Rage owner Norman Cohen. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next event. <laughs>